This series, Up for the Cup, will focus on the 17 London clubs who currently play in the top five tiers of English football and their histories in the FA Cup. This episode will concentrate on Spurs and their record in the FA Cup. In the 20th century, Tottenham Hotspur's history with the FA Cup was a proud one for the club. Since then, the relationship has yet to be rekindled. The first FA Cup final appearance as well as trophy lift came in 1901 when Spurs were a non-league club in the Southern League. No other non-league club has won the FA Cup since. The final was held at Crystal Palace Stadium in front of over 110,000 fans. The nearby Crystal Palace station provided a crucial link for both sets of fans commuting from north of the river. Alfred Priest opened the scoring for Sheffield United 10 minutes into the game. In response, Scotsman Alexander Brown scored a brace, putting Spurs 2-1 up before Walter Bennett equalised for the Blades. The replay was played at Burnden Park, which was at the time the home of Bolton Wanderers. Priest scored the first goal of the game again before half-time, however player manager John Cameron scored the equaliser for Spurs, then further goals from Tom Smith and Alexander Brown secured the cup for the Lily Whites. Twenty years later, in 1921, Spurs made their second cup final appearance and FA Cup trophy win. The final was played at Stamford Bridge in front of a capacity crowd of over 72,000. Spurs beat Wolverhampton Wanderers by one goal to nil and Jimmy Dimmock scored the solitary goal of the game in the 53rd minute. Tottenham would have to wait 40 years for their next FA Cup final, maintaining the theme of playing in finals when the year ended in 1. In 1961, Spurs created history by being the first team to win the League and Cup double in the 20th century, as well as the first since Aston Villa, who had done so in 1897. Spurs played Leicester City at Wembley with 100,000 in attendance. This was Spurs' first FA Cup final appearance at Wembley Stadium after winning the 1901 final replay at Burnden Park and 1921 final at Stamford Bridge. This was Leicester's first FA Cup final since 1949 when they lost 3-1 to Midland rivals Wolverhampton Wanderers. Bill Nicholson's Spurs side were frustrated going in at half-time goalless. However, second-half goals from Bobby Smith and Terry Dyson completed Tottenham's historic double and third FA Cup trophy lift. That Spurs side, with the likes of Danny Blanchflower, Dave Mackay, Cliff Jones and Les Allen, to name a few, would go down as legends of White Hart Lane. A year later, Spurs played Burnley in the 1962 final to make it consecutive cup final appearances and would become the second team to win back-to-back -back FA Cups in the 20th century after Newcastle United, who won in 1951 and 1952. Jimmy Greaves scored the first goal three minutes into the game. James Robson scored the equaliser for Burnley five minutes into the second half, however a minute later Bobby Smith put Spurs into the lead, making it his second consecutive cup final goal. Captain Danny Blanchflower wrapped things up and scored from the penalty spot, securing Spurs' fourth FA Cup trophy lift. The victory paved the way for Spurs' participation in UEFA Cup Winners' Cup, where they became the first English club to win a major European trophy in 1963. The final was at Feyenoord Stadium in Rotterdam. Tottenham beat Atletico Madrid by five goals to one, with two goals coming from both Jimmy Greaves and Terry Dyson, as well as a goal from John White. Number five for Spurs came in the 1967 final, which was dubbed as the Cockney final versus Chelsea in front of over 100,000 fans. Jimmy Greaves and Terry Venables were in Spurs colours that day against their former club. Jimmy Robertson and Frank Saul netted for Spurs with Robert Tambling pulling one back for Chelsea. With winning the FA Cup when the year ended in one being put to a stop by Spurs' 1967 victory, this would come to light again in 1981 when Spurs played Manchester City in the final at Wembley Stadium. The 1981 final would also mark the 100th anniversary of FA Cup finals. 
The final was on Saturday the 9th of May with another huge attendance at Wembley as 100,000 watched Thomas Hutchinson score for both teams. Hutchinson opened a scoring for City after half an hour and then scored an own goal with just over 10 minutes remaining. The final was to be replayed five days later. Ricky Villa opened a scoring for Tottenham after eight minutes before Steve McKenzie equalised for City three minutes later. A Kevin Reeves penalty five minutes into the second half gave City a 2-1 lead. Garth Crooks levelled for Spurs in the 70th minute. Six minutes later, one of the most spectacular individual goals of all time was scored. Tony Galvin passed to Ricky Villa, who collected the ball 30 yards away from City's goal, glided effortlessly past four Sky Blue defenders before slotting the ball past City goalkeeper Joe Corrigan. This goal was the winning one. Spurs won 3-2 and lifted their sixth FA Cup. Villa's goal was voted Wembley Goal of the Century in 2001. In 1982, Spurs would become the first side to win the FA Cup consecutively on two separate occasions in the 20th century. The only other clubs to do so at the time were the Wanderers of Leytonstone and Blackburn Rovers in the 19th century. With the competitive nature of English football, this was a great feat and historic one. The FA Cup final London derby between Spurs and QPR would see Terry Venables at Wembley, but this time as QPR's manager. The game ended in a 1-1 draw after Glenn Hoddle scored after extra time. However, Terry Fenwick equalised for the hoops five minutes later. Five days on from that in the replay, Glenn Hoddle scored again for Spurs, this time from the penalty spot six minutes into the game. This would be the only goal of the game at the time Spurs would match the record of seven FA Cup trophies alongside Aston Villa, making Tottenham the joint most successful club in FA Cup history until Manchester United joined them in 1990. A year after Manchester United won in 1990, Spurs would then set the record of being the most successful club in FA Cup history with number 8. Spurs won the cup again when the year ended in 1. Nottingham Forest made their first FA Cup final appearance since winning it in 1959. Forest have not reached a final since. It was also the only occasion that a team managed by Brian Clough reached the final. The FA Cup was the only major domestic trophy which eluded Brian Clough. This time Terry Venables was in the Spurs dugout with Gary Lineker leading the Spurs attack and Paul Gascoigne providing the creativity in midfield. However, an adrenaline-filled Gazza would have to leave the pitch after 17 minutes with an injury. Stuart Pearce opened a scoring in the 16th minute and gave Forrest a half-time lead. Ten minutes into the second half, Paul Stewart equalised for Spurs. The game went into extra time and four minutes into it, Des Walker put the ball into his own net, giving Spurs a 2-1 win. Spurs have been absent from FA Cup finals since 1991. Since then, their FA Cup trophy record has been surpassed by Arsenal and Manchester United, as well as being equaled by Chelsea and Liverpool. Many thanks for watching. Let me know of your FA Cup memories in the comments. Please like, share and subscribe. Stay healthy and safe. See you on the next Up For The Cup episode.